Most people have one income stream, maybe two at most. My husband and I have over 15, and that doesn't include our primary jobs. So the average person works to make an income to pay their bills each month. Usually, what they have left over goes towards their lifestyle, and maybe if they're doing well, a little bit goes towards saving and investing. But generally, as their income increases, they increase their spending, and they buy nicer cars, bigger homes, etc. But they don't build cash flow from passive investments, so they don't have the flexibility to try new things in their career, to take a break or a sabbatical, or to make changes. My goal is different. To me, wealth is not about cash flow. It's not about net worth. By buying and creating assets that create monthly or quarterly cash flow, I want to cover my co monthly cost of living with my investments. And what this does it is it allows each new dollar that comes in from my job to go into more cash flowing investments instead of towards my bills. And this compounds my returns over time. Today, I'm going to go over some real life examples of income streams that I've built. Watch till the end because I bet you haven't heard of most of these. Let's get into it. Number one are money month market accounts. They're boring and safe. I choose between a handful of online banks and credit unions that have FDIC insurance and currently pay about the same yield as a one-year treasury bond. Number two are mortgage note funds. So these are higher risk than a savings account, but they're also higher reward. Uh, these tend to be for accredited investors only. I lock up my money for one to three years at a time and earn more than double the yield of a money market account. These funds buy mortgages that banks don't want and focus on getting homeowners to start paying the mortgages again. They buy mortgages in bulk for dimes on the dollar so they can afford to cut great deals with homeowners to allow them to stay in their homes. Number three are private real estate funds that buys and operates short-term rentals. Once again, higher risk than a savings account, but my investment is backed by high quality properties that are thoughtfully designed and appealing to stay in, located in the Sunbelt areas of the U.S. and that command a higher than average daily rate. I get a distribution set to my account every quarter based on the performance of the Airbnb and VRBO properties, as well as whenever a property in the portfolio sells entirely. Number four is Yield Street's PRISM Fund, one of Yield Street's privately traded funds that doesn't require you to be an accredited investor to subscribe to it. It has a low minimum investment, and while I'm personally wary of putting too much money with Yield Street, distributions have been consistent thus far, and I also like that the portfolio invests in a diversified mix of credit, art, multifamily real estate, and other assets. Number five is affiliate income. So we recommend a couple different software products that people could really use them and get paid for it every month as long as the person we refer keeps paying for the product. In other words, we help sign up new subscribers and do a little customer support here and there. But mostly this has become a passive income stream that requires very little of our time and provides us with monthly income sent directly to our bank. Number six is an ATM fund. So this is one of my strongest cash flow performers currently. I place money with one of the largest non-bank ATM operators in the U.S., who sends me a monthly distribution to my checking account each month. In addition, I also get preferential tax treatment that benefits my other real estate investments. Number seven is Fundrise's Income Fund. This is a set of private real estate investment trusts, or REITs, operated by Fundrise. Each quarter, I get a distribution sent to my account based on the performance of the commercial and multifamily real estate investments that Fundrise makes. Of course, no investment is risk-free, but I do like that they manage billions of dollars for the customer money, and they seem to operate on the conservative side. Number eight is private equity debt. So I bought into a secure promissory note with a small private equity fund that acquires family-operated businesses. The fund owners stand to make more than double what they pay me in interest while still offering a highly competitive yield. So if they didn't end up paying because they mismanaged their acquisitions, as a last resort, I can legally foreclose on the assets of the fund. But of course, I would way rather be a passive investor, letting the fund managers do their thing and just send me monthly distributions. Number nine is a corporate RV park. So I'm a passive investor in an RV park in Louisiana with corporate factory customers that have long-term leases for their employees. I have confidence in the operator's ability to improve park revenue, add extra amenities like storage, and not only pay me cash flow, but also to significantly raise the value of the park so that it can be refinanced in five years and resold in 10. All right. Number 10, online courses. This one is semi-private. So we have multiple online courses for sale on a variety of topics that we have expertise in. If you build a course once and market it well, you don't have to be the one teaching every student one-on-one. -on -one. They pay for lifetime access to the material and we get paid every month for how much the course is brought in in sales. Number 11 is blog advertising revenue. 
So a blog that gets organic traffic from SEO can show ads to its visitors. When website visitors view or click on the ads, we get paid a very small amount per click. But every click adds up, and as the traffic to our content sites increased, our income goes up. This one isn't totally passive, as we do put some time into admin blog content, optimize the site, and also drive backlinks to the best performing pages. But we're looking forward to ramping up our content site investments over time. All right, number 12, uh, selling leads via SEO. So I have a website that uses SEO to bring in leads for services that I don't personally offer anymore. So I have a deal with another provider who does, and I sell him several leads every month and get paid when those leads close. The provider is happy to pay for guaranteed new clients, and I get passive income. All right, number 13 is software as a service. So my family has created multiple SaaS tools that pay us each month as long as the customers continue to pay for the platform. Number 14, partial mortgage notes. So I work with a few different owners of mortgage notes that banks weren't equipped to service and buy what are called partials from them. This is just a fancy way to say, I give you X dollars now, and you give me a yield of 10 to 13% tied to the performance of the specific mortgage that you own. Finally, number 15 is an industrial complex rental syndication. This is one of my most consistent performers in my share of an industrial complex, which is a handful of Fortune 1000 biotech and manufacturing tenants. The tenants are locked into multi-year leases, which means all keep getting cash flow for years to come with a projected balloon payment at the end when the operator sells the whole property. Remember, do your own due diligence and don't take this as investment advice. For each one of these income streams, we took the time to do our own modeling and to understand the asset enough to spend our time or our money on it. Not to mention that the, uh, these have been built up over the course of several years. So don't expect it to happen overnight. But if you are creative or if you're willing to reallocate some of the money you put into mutual funds, you can either buy cash flowing investments this month to start your journey or you can create your own cash flowing assets in the next 90 days by building a product that people want. Hope this helps.